Hello. Are we podcasting? We're, I think we're podcasting, Kristen. We're podcasting. We did it. <laughs> we did it. And this has been a banger of a week. Everybody's going back to school. Jenny's a little under the weather. My daughter has been sick. She has a rhinovirus, but there's also these other strains of viruses. And she's uh, got one. And this kid, she wakes up and she just, she's, my kids show they're sick through their skin. Like I can tell when Finn and Eleanor don't feel well by their skin. And let me tell you, they're real, very, very, very white. So if they go any more white, I'm like, did you put, what, what do you got on your skin there? Do we baby powder? Like they, I know where they get it, Kristen, because the other night you looked oh, beautiful, yeah. but I was like, Kristen's skin's a different color than normal. Mm-hmm. I bet she's getting sick, but, but I had no time. I, I had one day down where both Eleanor and I were sick, but this little girl has been sick for like six days and I just want her to turn the corner. I'm hoping today is the day. So once we're done here, I'll be cuddling her. And so today's podcast is a little bit of an escape and I'm going to enjoy this journey. Hopefully it's an escape for you. You can check out all of this beauty on the YouTube. You can watch it or you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. And please rate, review, and subscribe. It matters. We That's read right. them, and we love them as long as they're good. And if you have a bad review, maybe DM us that. If we're announcing some new shows. You might have heard. So That's go right. to imomsohard.com and get your tickets. Please come. It's such a good time, ladies. That's right. September 22nd, we're going to be in Oxnard. And September 27th, we're going to be at Flappers. And what's fun about these shows, first of all, there are only Southern California dates. And what's fun about these shows is because they're both clubs, Jen and I try out new material that will then put into the show that's coming out um, that we're going on the road for this year. And there will be some fun announcements about next year. So if I just think this is like going to be a surprise show that you're going to really enjoy. So go to imomsohard.com for tickets. There's, they're going to go. There's not very many seats. It's a small venue. Yeah. What is also fun about that is we like interact with the audience a lot more because you're right there. And then I know this is true for flappers and uh, I don't know if it's true for the Oxnard show, but afterwards at Flappers, a bar. we've gotten to hang out with the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Take we some just pictures go sit and... at the bar. Somebody was like, is there going to be a meet and greet? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm certain there's a bar attached. So high, high probability you'll see us in there because I'm not going home. No, we're not. I remember the last time that we did it. They did have like a, a thing up where you could take pictures. And yeah, so and it's we're, super fun. We're holding multiple cocktails while we're doing the pictures because yeah, it's just don't even it's know. in the bar. So it's I really need to fun. Be, I need to be out. Yeah. I need to be out. But speaking of out, I have, that sounded like I was going to tell everybody I was a lesbian. And I'm everybody's not, but like, I am no, wearing, we know, Kristen. Yeah, That's but weird. I am wearing a muscle shirt. But I'm very excited for what we're going to talk about today because we haven't been able to do it, but I'm going to tell you about my trip to Ireland That's, and everybody's been asking they need a little like they need to live this vacation vicariously through you and I, I have a lot of things to say and um there were so many times when I was there that it was hard that it was expensive at times but only one time and I'll I'll talk about that but overall as I was walking down these streets in these different little towns in Ireland I was like I am so happy that we are here. I am so happy that like we saved and saved and made it so that we could go. And every time I travel, I come back as a better human. And that's the God's honest truth. And everybody says it like, I think Mark Twain says something like, um, when we travel, we, we, we unlearn prejudice. I just butchered Ah. that, but you, you really do it opens your mind, opens your heart. You feel a different kind of sense of um, connection to people because if they say they've been there, you want to talk about it. If they are from there, you want to talk about it. Like it's just another way to relate to people. I do think that the thing about traveling is, especially when you go to another country, it is next level if they speak a different language, but there's this reset that happens because you only get to worry about like survival and experience and fun. Like you're really not worried about like, did I pay the cable bill? You're like, I don't give a shit. Cause right yeah. now I have to find the train that gets us back to our hotel. Like it's Ain't that just, the truth. you're just focused on the vacation at hand, you yeah. know? 
you're adventuring, which is really fun. So um, this was a big deal for us. We have, as a family, traveled to um, Costa Rica, which is our first like international trip. And it was with Jen and her family and another family. And it was super fun. But here's what I'll say is probably, especially for me, the most discouraging thing about planning a trip anywhere is the cost of the flight and the hours of the flight. And yeah. because we're in the US to go to Europe, especially because we're in California, to go to Europe, you're looking at like a 12 hour, eight hour flight. And if you're us and you got it on miles, you ain't going direct. So it was to we're take going off through <laughs> Salt Lake City and then we're going to step in Cincinnati and then we're going to fly out of New York. <laughs> it was weird that we started in Mexico. Um, <laughs> But we, yeah, we're going to drive to Fresno, <laughs> which is about four hours, and uh, we're going to hop an hour, just in one of those little jumps over hey, into man, Idaho. And then, If it would have been miles, we would have done it. We we literally did have to fly to Dallas. Yes. Oh, and then fly Dallas to Dublin. I'm like, yep. it makes no sense. But we paid for all four tickets on miles, so I was like oh my gosh, this is such a savings. We have to do it this way. So we, and we stayed, and we stayed four nights of our trip on miles in Ireland because you perfect. can use your miles for hotels. My God, perfect. So it, that alone as a mom and as somebody that's budgetarily conscious, I was like, now we can put some of that towards fun and I'm, I can loosen my butthole a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, so, okay. So we fly from LAX to Dallas. And my son, we're very similar. He's like, I don't know if I've emotionally prepared for the hours in the flight. Um, I go, free gaming anxiety. I said, Finn, look, buddy, time will pass no matter what. We have a lot of gadgets and gizmos and lots of things that we're going to, uh, but you, time will pass and we will get there. You're not you, going to raw dog this flight, son. <laughs> no, you, I know that's no. trendy. You've seen it on YouTube, but we're not trying that on this one because- Mommy and daddy will get divorced. I will have you thrown into like a air marshal. And I'm just going to say this about my son. And I don't know if anybody else's kids are like this, but I got one that is like this. And also I am like this. If my son is doing the thing he wants to do, he is delightful. He is charming and fun. And everybody's having a better time because he's doing exactly what he wants. But if he is not doing exactly what he wants he makes it hell for everyone else no poker face <laughs> no poker face <laughs> no no niceties no pleasantries no no uh effort in the direction of uh calming everyone down it's more like how can i ask for a thing that's going to antagonize my mother right now like ha you know hey do you have any other headphones and the thing i said 30 times before we left on for the flight is bring three different kinds of headphones. And here's why. And I was super calm. And then he's asking me, and I'm finally tucked into my seat, but oh God. okay. So my son, but I'm I, like, I will say just for the listeners, I fly with this woman a lot. And I tell you what it's like. If, if we should be getting on that plane and we're standing in line and they have not called us to get on that plane, <laughs> this woman is calling audibles. Like what's going on? Is there a problem with the flight? I don't understand. They said we're boarding. We're not boarding. Who, who? She's turning to people going, who'd they call? What's your, what's your boarding group? What do we miss? I don't Why like, do they get to go? I Who's don't like when group, when we're group one and there's a bunch of group tours and they're crowding the plate. He's the I, pilot, Kristen. <laughs> you got to let the flight crew on or we're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, so I get it. I get what flying with Finn is like, I understand that. I get it. Get it. Ma'am, you can only bring on two bags. Oh, you want me to prove I can put the bag into this bag? Okay, I'll do it. All right, whatever. Get there. There, I did it. You happy? Okay. Scan this, bitch. Uh oh, Kristen is laughing with no sound coming out because she knows I'm, it's true. I'm uncomfortable. But Wait, my role, yeah. But my role is different as the mother and the yeah. like leader of this vacation. I'm like, if they see, also it's vacation. When we're going, it's work. Even though it's super fun, it's the best case scenario. Like I'm, most of my anxiety is like, if we don't get on this plane, we don't do our show. We're like gonna let so many people down. So my, I am so like amped. But yeah. on this, I was like, look, this is vacation. This is we're gonna we're gonna take it as it comes, right? 
I, so, you were like, I know I'm going to have Finn dealing to deal I, with this, so I I'm, cannot. <laughs> meanwhile, little Eleanor, she's just like, she doesn't, you know, she's she's easygoing, man. She she's just like, is. Hugging the flight attendants. Yeah, she like rolls in and her little ears kind of hurt, but she doesn't say anything. And Finn's like, I don't even like this kind of skittle. And I'm like, just eat it. And I'm like, these are the wrong size. I didn't want skittle littles. <laughs> what is this crap? And you've paid $11 for that pack of skittles. I'm like, you're going to eat those goddamn skittles. So we're, we're on the plane and the Sweeney's are, we are, we are a, a, a strong group. My husband is 240. Like we're all getting above five, four, like everybody's getting tall. And, you know, all of a sudden they have us in all four seats in coach that are like, it basically says you're flying on miles. That's the seats yeah. we got. Like, like literally I was surprised that they just weren't like, like crates underneath our butts. They're and like, how is there a row MM? <laughs> are we on the back wing? We're on the tail wing right now. So I'm like, hello, everybody. Welcome to luxury travel. And Eleanor's like, this looks different than the flights you take, mom. And I'm like, you're right. It certainly is. So let's just get in on each other's laps and call it a day. So we get in, it's four seats across. And the next eight hours are pretty brutal because we are flying through the night. We've never done a red eye before, but we're in the upside down because when we, when we arrive in Dublin, who knows what time it is. It's like 9 a.m., which is like 4 a.m., which it's is like Thursday. You don't we know. don't know if it's Wednesday. Yeah. We're, we're all confused. So pretty, pretty long flight. Although this is a funny thing that I discovered. I'm like, Eleanor, Finn's being difficult, like squirming and not having an easy time of it. And I look over and Eleanor's just so happy. And I look at her and she's got her screensaver is Glenn Powell. And it's just like <laughs> 32 mm. pictures of Glenn Powell. And I was like, see, she knows what to do to like calm herself. But my these son is like, are both these your seats children. are, yeah, these yeah. seats are really coming in on me. I'm I really wish, uh, for my own enjoyment, not for yours or any other, but I wish it was a, you guys were in the center five and that there we was were. one person oh. dead in the middle <laughs> of you guys. And so you guys are like, Pat, Pat, pass him these cheese and peanut butter crackers, please. Tell Colin, no we more were, cocktails. Tell we Colin. were on one flight like that where my son had the Pringles and I wanted the Pringles and I go, and there was a guy next to me, I left and he just was a real like sour, wet fart. And he was yeah. like, I go, hey, Finn, buddy, can you pass the Pringles? And Finn was ignoring me on purpose. I go, pass the Pringles. And he's like, I want the Pringles. I go, I have not had any Pringles yet, and I want some damn Pringles. So <laughs> then Finn, like, brings out the Pringles and kind of goes, gives a face, like, why do you have to have these? You bought the wrong Skittles. So then the guy grabs the Pringles from Finn and just passes them over to me. Thank he was God. Like, yeah. Such a, he was such a wet fart. Anyway. Not my son. He's not far behind, but this guy was a real pain in the ass. Anyway, okay, we're not even in Ireland yet. Okay. 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 We land in Ireland. We're getting we there. We land in there. Ireland. You'll love this. I, we are all, I'm like, okay, we're tired. But in order to beat jet lag, we have to stay up. Like all oh the books. That, and it's important because you want to get on their time as much as you can so you enjoy your days. If you fall into jet lag, which means if you try to sleep it off, you're going to be counter. You're going to be up during the night and you won't catch up and then you'll feel sick when you get home. So it is really important on that first day to just barrel through as much as you can, stay up to 8 PM and then go to sleep with everybody else. So it kind of means you're staying up for 24 hours. It's brutal. Yeah. So we get, we, it's brutal. Let me asterisk that it's brutal for anyone over 30. It's not brutal for anyone in middle school. It's because oh, their adrenaline kicks in they're and fine. they're like, they they double down there. I, I remember those days. Yeah, I, not I, me. I was I was that way till I was probably 26, 27. Nope. I was no, nope. yeah. no. They Kristen were... gets tired, you guys. Yeah, I get and tired. I get tired. One eye turns just straight in. <laughs> and the other one, the lid goes just halfway. Her jaw stops working. I sound like that she... dumb cat that the cat <laughs> clock that like moves this. Oh my god. Except you're not moving that fast. She's no, like, hey, I'm shut what? down. What? I can't. Uh, where's... I'm really fun. And then it's like a garage door. And then I'm like out. She's and she's I'm asleep out. while she's talking to you. Yeah. And but so, then yeah. I'm like, can I go? Can I go now? Was I nice enough to everybody? Can I go? Uh, <laughs> so so we get to Dublin and we go to the um, 
we go to the desk to buy to get our rental car already i love it because it's the airport is really calm and we go up to the counter and this guy's super nice irish guy is there to help and all of a sudden i look next to me and there's a bro wearing a lean uh huskers jacket and oh, i think i'm hallucinating my god and i'm like are you f- from lincoln and he's like yeah i'm from lincoln my wife and i are here vacationing and i look back and she goes are you Kristen from my mom so hard <laughs> hey yeah. no way Kristen. i took a picture i took a picture it's hilarious so then i'm like i would love to stay in chat but i've got my husband's about to fall over and we've got two kids that have energy so that can't we that will not do so we get this little car and the guy is so funny behind the counter he's like I'm going to tell you, this is a gorgeous car. It's a gorgeous car. And I'm like, what I really love it. What we've got here is a Kia. Yeah. It's a, it's a top not- quality made vehicle. <laughs> That's going to fit all. Also, <laughs> small. So we have yeah. four bags yeah. that we're trying to put into oh, this yeah. car. And Europeans, yes, he drives. they like a small car. They like a small car, and so do I. So Please we, tell me Eleanor drove. Oh, no, God. Okay. I drive. I have not had sleep yet. And I keep telling myself, left side, left side, left side, oh my God. left side. And I have to go through, you know what Ireland loves? A freaking roundabout. Oh, geez. It's literally in the yep. backwards. So I'm roundabouting. Thank God, but- though, you got that left eye that still works when you're <laughs> tired, though, because your right one's, it's just for show. It's not it doing anything. It actually worked out great. Okay. I, think my, I think my exhaustion kicked my adrenaline in, so I had one <laughs> job to do. I didn't talk. I didn't. I told everybody just to be quiet. Let yeah. me just get to the Smart. hotel. We parked and I was like, I'm not doing that again. Actually, I did drive the next day, but I white knuckled it and I was a bitch to everybody. So then I was like, Colin, you got to drive. I just, I'm just oh God, too the wound stress. up. The stress. Yeah, so I can't. We get to the hotel and I go, guys, we got to put down the bags and we got to go for a walk. So we did. And it was awesome. And in my head, I was like, at some point, I'm going to give the kids some independence, but I don't know Dublin. Let's take a, let's take a beat. Nope. We go to a literal city park within two minutes and I go don't you think we could just leave him in the park and go get a pint and Colin's like yep and I said I gave Colin I gave Finn a uh his made sure his phone worked we got him an international plan I was like take care of your sister don't talk to anybody weird we're gonna be across the street at the pub just so you know everybody's gonna be charming they're gonna yep. yeah so don't fall don't for be it. don't yeah. be the kid that's like the only like rowdy one that brings any negative attention you're representing america let's be cool you know <laughs> take so, off the houston astros shirt <laughs> no the whole it, time i know except well, when he, i love when, that the guy that had the lincoln had the husker shirt on when you got there it's like It's our people. We're, from we're logo America. people. Yeah. yeah, we're logo people. So we get to Dublin, and I wanted to say that okay, because if you're planning a trip, I know that everybody's looking for actual like hotel names. The Morrison Hotel is where we stayed. It's um, part of our points or whatever, like our Bonvoy points or Marriott points or Hilton points. They do Show that. Show respect. She's Bonvoy, you guys. I'm Bonvoy, but this one, I think uh, the Morrison. I can't remember what point system it is. We did get it on our American Airlines points. Nice. And you know, when you're in Europe, you one room only has two beds, so it can get a little pricey. So um, I really liked the Morrison. I thought it was, it's a hop skip over the water to the little area that everybody talks about, which is like Temple Bar, which is like, you know, the Irish, like you, it's oh more down there. Oh my God, is it that place where it's like decorated up the yes. sides of the yes. outside? Oh God, yes. it's so dreamy. And it is dreamy. It is dreamy. We got down, down there and I was like, love it. Glad I saw it, took some pictures. And then we left and we walked over to uh, a different neighborhood. And it was the first day that uh, Ireland had had sunshine in months. Mm. So when I tell you the people were out, the people were out and it was so awesome. And that's what they talk about when they talk about pub culture. I didn't, I think I thought I knew what it was. I was like, Oh, everybody just likes to go out and get a pint. And I kind of thought in my head that it was going to be one way, but it's so different. It's, it's not people getting hammered. I no, mean, they're just restaurants. They're right? just, ha- well, they're pubs. They're pure pubs and they've and you can get pub food but really you're sitting in these like old ass beautiful have been around forever wood oh my god i love it bars that are packed with people they're all having a pint they're having a chat nobody's on their phones no every you know it's it's ireland it's known for the gift of the gab they talk about the weather they talk nobody's a stranger so 
I, I'll give you an example. We went into this pub. This is actually funny. And the Guinness is just to die for, right? But I didn't Why know. Why is it different though? Do you it know? You have bitter. a theory? Yeah. Oh. It, the pipe, first of all, if you're going to. It's like it's, sweet, right? It's a little, little bit sweet. It's still got like a, um, like a mocha-y flavor yeah. to it. But yeah. in Ireland, everybody drinks Guinness. So the lines stay really clean. And in the States, everybody drinks different beer. So the lines get really skunky. And also during mm. transport, which the Irish will tell you, in transport, Guinness starts to taste different. So Guinness, oh my God. And the head on it is just thick. I know. They That's drink- going to be a joke. Yep. Uh, may I quote That's you? They, uh, is it, they drink it warm or they drink it room, te- room ha- temperature? Room temperature. Well, okay. I guess it's a little chilled. But it's just so damn delicious. And like, it's just the most. So when I get there, I love drinking half and halves, which is harp, which is an Irish yeah. beer and Guinness. Oh my God. I go, Colin, we're first beer that we ordered. I go, can you order me a harp? And Colin, big Irish, he goes, he goes, hi, can I get a Guinness and a harp? And, or, and, a, and a half and half and the bartender goes, what the fuck is that? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh, it's a half Guinness, ah. half harp. And he goes, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm and not so doing that. And, and so I go, no, just get it. You just get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I was like, out. yeah. Oh my God. And so we sat there, had a chat and these two nice blokes at the bar were just having a chat. And, um, I found a pair of glasses, sunglasses. And I said, excuse me, do you mind if I just put these on the bar? Cause I think somebody left them. And he goes, I think I know who it was. And he like oh. ran out the bar to find the lady that left her glasses. God and bless. I was like, you know, so then the bar gets too packed. He followed her out. I love him. It's it's just that's what it is. It's it's streets that are are packed with people, but there's no reason. It's just people like to be outside. Is when it the little, weather is nice? Is it, it little neighborhoods inside like a big city, or is it like Dublin, the big city is like just friendly? The city you know is I mean? the country is friendly. I think okay. the the Dublin is its big city, so it's definitely got that vibe on some of the city streets or like moving traffic. And but this these areas are all like old areas that have all these pubs that are just side by side by side. And then there's this you know a shop and a and you're walking down. There's people singing outside, and then you and then the pubs get too full, and they're like you can go on the street and drink a pub. And I, I think love- the the police, the guard, you know, they're just making sure that you're not. <laughs> a drunk fool but literally everybody's just a soccer out. hooligan yeah oh my god and they had a some weird soccer game going on and the olympics it was so fun and in these pubs you're gonna love this i didn't understand what this was in some of these super old old pubs you're sitting there right you're at the bar and then next to you is a <clears throat> next to you is a it looks like a divider and it's just about two feet back so like you can lean back and look around it but i'm like what this is weird i can't see the guy sitting next to me at the at the bar and colin told me those were so back in the day that men and women were not in the same area it would divide the men and the women in the pub and i was like boy that really worked for many mingling because if only the irish didn't have a ton of children like well i don't know how to tell you those catholics really tried to like put a a a big Stop on the yeah because that's why they do that like irish that dancing you know where you don't move your top so that like if somebody looked in the because dancing wasn't allowed so if you looked in the bar it doesn't look like they're dancing but from the feet waist down there tap dancing it up man it's it's a lot of movement and i think that um yeah the irish gotta give it to them they're all like they're a happy horny bunch i love i love those old places yes because like I think you and I both do. They are familiar, like it's like familiar for today, but then it's also, it's been around for a hundred years and there is such comfort to me in that like, there's kind of nothing new under the sun. So that every problem that you've had or every like situation you've been in, people have been walking into this bar complaining about the same shit for 300 years. It's like, it's like technology is different, but like life it just always reminds me that like life just keeps going. Yeah. Like I, I feel the same way. And here's a weird, you like woo woo crap. So I'm just going to say it. But when I walk the streets of old places and especially where I'm new and, or we go into like an old pub that's been there forever, <clears throat> I feel like they're like holograms next to me of like the people that were there before. Yes. And it's like, you're rubbing elbows with different times in history. And it just feels like, like I put my hands on like, 
the the divider. And I'm like, I bet there was a woman here 50 years ago, 100 totally. years, 200 years ago. Like there's so many things that connect us. And it just like my whole body feels like I'm very planted in the ground. Like I feel, and, and there's no other place. Like, I mean, Scotland, Ireland, all of the places that have the castles and the limestone and the green against the grays. It's like, it just, it wakens something inside of you that feels incredibly familiar. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's incredible. So anyway, I digress. We go to Dublin. Next day, we got to go get up and go to Cork. It's three hours away. I'm thinking, what's hard about that? Let me explain to you what the Irish uh, do with their streets. Um, God bless them. them. Very There's narrow? no A to B. It is. <laughs> It is like drop a piece of spaghetti and that is their highway system. It oh, is man. loops and corners and, and tight. I am not kidding you. So of course everybody got car sick. Is it, is it cause is it hilly or like it why? Is hilly. It depends on where you are, but it's not hilly. It's um, yes, it's hilly, but they, they do it really well. It's also crazy. Cause there are like guardrails of green. So you're, sometimes you're in the open and then sometimes you're like, literally, it looks like you're like driving down a green tube. And I, and then there's a tractor that comes out of nowhere and somehow magically we all pass each other. And yeah, it, I was, I was like in the back, like how many Xanax am I allowed? <laughs> it, the kids were fine. And I was holding the back of Eleanor's headrest, <laughs> like white knuckling in the back seat. So God, thank God my husband drove. But we did go, here's what I would recommend. We went from Dublin. I think we did this right. We took a circle. We went, we went from Dublin. So we were trying to go to the sa- the Southern part. So we went to Cork, which is on the way, but in between Dublin and Cork, there's a town called Kilkenny, which has a castle and it's a medieval city. And Jen, you would freak. This really? place is so old. It is so beautiful. I've, I got so caught up, I didn't take as many pictures as I wish I would have. But we went to a castle, and they have this lawn where I a love human, castles. I need a castle. It's awesome. So we got to take this tour. It wasn't expensive. Took the, the castle tour. There's a lawn that for as long as your yes. eye can see. Yes. And my son ran it. I go, hey, Greyhound, get out there and run that sucker so you yeah. know easier. So um literally so beautiful and so green we had the best day and then by the time we got to cork which is where colin's potential kin is we were so tired that we just stayed in our lovely hotel and ate a meal and then got up and left the next day we really didn't explore cork because we were like we should just be able to call our shot and not kill ourselves trying so if i were to go back i'd go to kinsale and i would explore more of cork but we just didn't have the time, you know, Yeah, it was, it was a tight turnaround. Um, but that's where he is, his people are from, right? Yes. It's supposed okay. to be his lineage is from there, but funny. I mean, it's the Sweeney's. They don't stay in one spot. They're, <laughs> they're kind of all over. They're, they're all over the continent impregnating women in their mini Coopers. All, yeah. And then there's hey, just a brood of them everywhere. It's not, if it's not a mini Cooper, it's probably some horse drawn carriage or some, you know, I don't know, sea, sea fallen boat. <laughs> I don't know. That, listen, a fishing, a fishing, fishing ship ex- or, expedition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we leave. So at this point we do Kilkenny, we do it. And then we go to Cork and then we Why go. Why do to, I know the name Kilkenny? Is that a TV it's show? It's very famous. Oh, okay. All it's right. very famous. So we went to, I want to talk about, this was, Jen knows, this was my favorite. Dingle, which was. So I know it's the funniest name. My kids also Dingle. giggle at it. Do you want to know what a seventh grader I am, Jen? We were walking through the castle in Kilkenny and there is a picture. I took a video of it, but I couldn't get it to focus very much before I got in trouble. And there is a, a brunette woman in one picture and there's a blonde woman in another picture and they each have one left boob out, right? <laughs> what? And I'm, and I'm taking a video and I'm laughing because I'm like, in the video, you can hear me go, hey, it looks like uh, Kristen and Jen have found their place. And then my son walks up and he's like, mom, those ladies have their boob out. And my husband's like, Finn, just knock it off. It's art. Like, why are you making fun of it? And I was like, I just, I just made a bit out of it. Yeah. I, I'm me and my eighth grade son are 
Yeah, if I mom so hard, we're seventeenth century wet nurses. This that's this what is, they look like. I guess that's what it must have been. I don't know. They were leading with what God gave them. It, it wasn't. They weren't unattractive. Let boobs. me let me ask a question about Dingle. Did I heard oh, they're now really we're Dingle? Were, I heard they're very famous for their berries. Have you? You need to stop. Okay. How dare I'm you? I'm just wondering if you tried any no. of the delicious berries from Dingle. You're funny. It's a small town with a million new people in it every year because there's a million people that are that come in for tourism that visit Dingle and there's 2000 people that live there. So it's literally the two things that I love. It's a small town with new people. And, and so what do they come there for? Like what are the oh draws? My gosh. Like Okay, I'm going to tell you. Again, the pub culture, it's famous there. Like, it's also famous for the pubs that are half um, um, hardware stores and half pubs. So you can go in and, like, up. it's hilarious, Jen. And, like, these bros are, like, singing a song with, like, there's, like, three 16-year-old dudes at 2 p.m. singing with their guitars, you know, just cuter than all get out. Eleanor was like, hello. <laughs> and Ugh. and the, on the other side, you can buy, you know, a washer for whatever thing you're fixing. It just kills me. And then in the next pub over is this woman that's leading everybody in like um, couples dancing. And she's like, now grab your partner. And like, they're, that's a terrible Irish accent, but they're, <laughs> they're, it's so, and then the next one is it's, there's music in the streets. There's music in the pubs. It's charming and sweet, and it's small enough that, like, we felt totally fine with the kids, like, walking about. And in the middle of this little town is this beautiful cathedral, and they were having what's called a soul session. So these three bros on, like, guitars were just oh my God. singing, like, James Taylor. Kristen ovulated. In. She was like, I, I didn't know these eggs were still cooking, man. Hey, man, I'm in iron. I'm like, hey, let's, okay, guys, we're going to kick her back up. Engines, uh. <laughs> engines are a go boosters are ready then you've got the dingle pub they also have dingle gin which is really popular and it's very floral and delicious gin have, or gin gin and oh, gin okay. they have dingle crystal which is literally i didn't let any of my family members go in there because i'm like we can't God, cost, no. we can't even pay for a votive so no. like just handmade crystal from generations of people and they're all so nice the people are so nice I, i'm gonna throw it out there it, there's no dingle crystal slash bar though right there's probably right not next that. to it right next to it <laughs> oh man the confidence i gotta say this is what i mean about there's nothing new under the sun so like we would jokingly say like now and today in the united states like a great idea would be if home depot had a bar in it right the same way we're like why isn't there like a wine tasting flight at target you know 200 years ago irish already realized that this was a thing and they just started doing it that's like, what pub culture is they're like how do we okay we're obviously there are plenty of drunk irishmen right like there's plenty of people getting drunk but what i saw that pub culture was is that it's like a very um, welcoming environment where there is food and pub and if you need to buy a screwdriver you can not a drink but the actual thing and also there's music and there's families and it's like everybody's doing it it's like but you know i think there's some like unwritten rules like you don't have your kid in the pub past a certain time at night sure. that makes perfect sense and they're super super strict on duis so again i just think like there is this acknowledgement that this is part of our lives. At no point did I see anybody in the pubs like doing shots of purple hooter. You know what I mean? And also Guinness is so thick and rich. And like, that's what the majority of people are drinking that it feels like nobody's getting just shit faced. I should say at least what we saw because we were out only until like 10 and it, and we were there when it was the first sun of the season. So everybody was out and having fun. We went to the beach. And it was the first day that you could go to the beach because it had been so cold up until we got there. And Eleanor goes, Mom, I don't think that lady should wear white pants to the to the beach. And I go, I don't think those are white pants. I think those are her legs. They're her. Oh, wow. That's... And when I tell you they have like SPF 1004, that is not an exaggeration. Because most of the time the weather's overcast and sort of 
um, gray. And we just happened to be there in sunshine, which was literally every, anything anybody could talk about. You want to know what's nice to talk about? The damn weather. You know why? Because it's like neutral. It's, yes. it's neutral. It's not politics. It's, it's not politics. There's no I don't fighting talk over about it. it. No fighting over it. It's just the most, I'll talk about it all damn day. So then in Dingle, um, we decided, so the one expensive thing that we didn't account for is that golf is very expensive and it's oh. the golf courses are very fancy. They're like bucket list, like golfing in Ireland is like bucket list stuff. Like rich businessmen go golf in Ireland. I didn't, I thought there'd be a public course because uh, my husband and Finn both love to golf. You got to golf. Huh. Eleanor and I will go do falconry, Milltown House falconry. And I think it was, it was like $50, which for an event that lasts like four hours where you get a pet, a freaking falcon, you get a hold of falcon. They, yeah. they come, you put on a leather glove and they like sit there and it's literally that falcon's just deciding not to murder you. They do. Cause I remember when we were in Scotland, my yeah. nephew did falconry. It's and so cool. I was like, I, I, birds freak me out a little bit especially like huge ones. Yeah. And I remember the guy saying like, this was in Scotland, but I'll do an Irish accent. Cause that's, he was like, that bird is uh, three to 400 pounds of pressure per square inch. So if it decides that it wants to pulverize your shoulder, it just will it do sure so. Will. Yeah. We had a, this, our guy was exactly like that. He was so dark. My falconry was so cool. And they brought this owl out that I was like, eh, yeah, again, this guy's just uh, has had a snack and is deciding not to kill us. And at one point he's like, you know, we had to deal with, we had to deal with him at one point because he kept killing everybody's cat. And I, and, <laughs> and then, terrible. and then, you know what he said? He's like, these birds are smart. They don't swoop down and pick something up. They knock it off the cliff. So a lamb will fall down off the cliff, dies. And then they can eat it. And I'm thinking to myself, some of those sheep are big. So that just means it could knock me off a cliff. Like well, yeah. now in my head, I'm like, and then he's like, okay, this next one's named George. And he's going to sit on your shoulder. And I'm like, okay. I <laughs> Why did I wear this fashionable sheepskin <laughs> coat? It was so cool. I never had opportunity to wear it. Now I regret it. Uh. <laughs> Why are we so, doing this next to a uh, cliff? It doesn't make sense. This isn't safe. The whole, all of Dingle is next to a cliff. And I'm like, this guy needs to stop talking. So we do falconry. It's so awesome. And then the nice thing about Dingle is there's plenty to do and see that doesn't cost a dime. You can go on the, on the sleigh head um, scenic drive where it's just all these cliffs and there's like, you're, the eye candy is nonstop. And it is the most green, beautiful, quilted, scenic like you can go outside and just look at the landscape and you're there for your your get your brain goes for a good hour like it's it's that kind of magical to me and it was that thing that made me love dingle and also of course it's a small town with a lot of new people and there's a place called murphy's Wait. ice cream oh come on murphy's ice cream where i don't know who does the hiring in that joint but they're the most darling outgoing 18 to 22 year olds that are so into ice cream and we went like three times a day eleanor found <laughs> it's vacation <laughs> there's murphy's in galway and in um dingle and in dublin so we hit all of them i think to we, be clear we, there yeah. are probably one gazillion businesses called murphy's but if you go murphy's there you're ice cream. looking for murphy's ice cream okay if you know you know because there's definitely like a murphy's chiropractic murphy's sure. breaks murphy's there's law firm. yeah there's <laughs> it's a very, absolutely right it's the and, smiths of <laughs> ireland we had a really similar experience kristen what it was just like falconry in that it was so shocking because while kristen was having this really wonderful, spiritual, <laughs> life-changing vacation. I was with my in-laws in <laughs> Connecticut and in Vermont. And I was like, oh, I just want a couple fun things for my kids to do that don't involve like going to the Apple store because grandpa lost his iPad again. <laughs> so we, we uh, went to this like little local farm in Vermont and it was wonderful. It was so wonderful to see, but there were these pigs there and, oh, no. uh, if you want to get brutal and, and 
kids to grow up real fast. Is it breeding season? Oh, no. It wasn't. Thank God it wasn't breeding season. But my kids are like, oh, my God, these these pigs are so, they're so huge. They're so interesting. So, like, once you get into contact with them, they're like, these are real things. Like, you see these on TV and in videos and stuff like that. And she's like, well, we got to decide if we're going to slaughter that one or not because uh, he's starting to get old. They get gamey. So you got to slaughter them when they're still an adolescent. And I'm like, can we not have this conversation in I'm front telling of my you, adolescence? Farm life is real life. Like Travel is hard. It's stressful, especially when you're driving on the other side of the road. You're trying know, to be and- like. And he's like trying to like drive with one hand. I'm like, we're uh-uh, not there don't yet. Be cool. Let's not don't be, cool. be cool. And then I'm the. I'm like, I sound like a hound because I'm like, I don't think you should be driving with one hand. You're not like, we're not, we haven't been here. And he's like, I've got it. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I would like two and 10, sir. Yeah. Two and 10. Thank you. Or I don't know what the time difference is in Ireland, but I'd like you at four and eight, whatever that is. Just get there. I don't know what 10 and two is here, but (laughs) I'm going to mark it with some I'd like you at Wednesday and Saturday, (laughs) sir. Be safe on that wheel. (laughs) So again, can't say enough about Dingle, but then our time in Dingle had to, had to be done. And I actually did cry when I left. Aww. I was like, it's just such a magical place. And it was everything I wanted in an Irish experience because it's so calm and cute and quaint. And I kind of grew up in that kind of neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, but then we go to Galway and what is that song? What's that? Um, it's a Led Zeppelin song. It's like, yeah. Um, Diana. Diana? Yeah, it's that. Okay. It's the that's the theme song of Galway. It is the it is the like Seattle rock and roll part of Ireland. Wow. Where it's medieval AF and it is there's gray to it like castles and it's old. It's old, but it's also just filled with people and it's like there's it's like got a like a rockabilly vibe to it oh, man. and it's i love that i want to go it's, there it's so it's action-packed and let me just tell you we get in there at 3 p.m right and i notice there's a lot of very young people and then i take a closer look and i'm like there's a shit ton of young people and you know we had a hard time finding an airbnb and we're a hotel in general so we get into galway and notice everybody looks real young and then the, i notice a lot of girls are wearing like you know those like cheap dresses from lulu's that we've all bought at a time or two when it's like you got to go to something formal but you don't want to pull the trigger and yeah. it's kind of like crappy f- fabric yes literally zero lining like we barely ever get one that works so i notice all these girls are like Pan- yeah, anything that was romantic and dingle goes right away out the window and we're in galway okay we're in like and the girls are dressed a little like ready to party so so i don't understand what's going on but i remember that we had um a hard time finding a a a hotel and so we ended up finding this airbnb which you're always like really you know you never know what you're getting with an airbnb all the time i've had i've had 80 percent great success but that 20 percent has left a burn yeah where i'm like you never know eight percent of the time you're getting a two-way with a camera behind it you don't know and and here's what I would say about the Airbnb that we had in Galway. How hard is it for you to get damn hair dryer that connects to your, like every Airbnb should have a freaking hair dryer. Should be period. the law. It should be, should the, be law. the law. Yes. Because also their airplugs are different. So I didn't take one with me because every place up until this point had one. So I told my, you. I, I know. had them. Oh. I know, but I have the plug. I just didn't have the dryer because I only took one bag, which that's another, it's another story. Oh yeah. So at this point I've been wearing my clothes a bit. And in Ireland, you, this is another tip. You can't really do loads of laundry because their plugins, they don't have the same electrical charge that an American plugin does for a washer and a dryer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So it's to be conservative. So you are not, you're doing one load of laundry a day. So at this point, I've got like one t-shirt left that doesn't smell bad and we need to do laundry and we have done a load and that sucker has been washing for three hours and we're in Galway. And I'm like, there's no way in the time we're here, that's going to dry. 
And I also, so, yeah, do they have a dryer there? Because you can't hang that so outside the balcony and go away. Everybody it, does, but you can't because it gets wet. So when you look I, in the windows, it's all hanging clothes. And I'm like, of course, of course it is. So but isn't it so humid there that it's like never going to dry? Exactly. I don't get it. I I literally think you have to repeat wear your clothes a There's lot. There's another like, reason there has to legally be a hair dryer in that place. Thank so if you. you get, in a pinch, you could hair dry a I'm shirt. I'm telling you, and I brought denim shorts. Okay, what is, nothing. What is that place? What, is it Ireland, the land of yeast infections? I How know. How are those women supposed to get dry panties so that they don't like sit around and you know, I don't know damp underwear? I have lots to say about Galway. So okay. this rock and roll place that we stay in. When I tell you, okay, so let me set the stage. We're walking our bags on this. I don't know how freaking old, but the oldest of old cobble street and it's like and the bags are like <laughs> bouncing and i'm so tired and i've been fighting with colin and He's we're like wrong skittles again. <laughs> and we're getting in and we get into our airbnb it's a five-story walk up and it only gets more narrow as it goes up so i'm like i'm huffing and puffing every time by the fourth i was good until number four and then i was like jesus christ i've got to work out so then we get in our Airbnb is like the top of an old ass medieval building. Colin, who is 6'3", there's only about 10 feet by four feet that he can stand up. Oh boy. And yeah, it's got a real this, low ceiling, huh? When I tell you the shower was like the smallest shower you've ever seen, I go, he couldn't turn around. I think it looked like a see-through coffin. <laughs> like... I'm sure as he like turned around, his like junk was like running the side. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, the price was right. <laughs> but I thought it was expensive. I was like, what kind of bullshit? And then it turns out not only are the Olympics going on, oh, but Galway's Kentucky, Ireland. Wait, they're not in them. They're not in Galway. Ireland huh? is no, but they're rooting for them. But I oh. think that that's why everybody's in Galway. But it's oh. because it's the Kentucky Derby of Ireland, and it's in Galway. Oh. So it was packed with people. And the first night we were there, it was this thing, this tradition they have, where the girls get in for free. So it was like prom, prom age, prom, on steroids in Galway, just literally kids from they looked like they were two years older than finn and they were all the, the boys were all wearing these three-piece suits and the girls were wearing How these little dresses. Uh, oh my god it was cute no it was cute for the first hour when i was like isn't this cute these guys are and then all of a sudden i'm like they are all really drunk and they've oh, been no. here since 8 a.m and so the girls oh, are boy. wearing their high heels with socks they are holding bags and like smoking cigarettes on and like, cobblestone and then we're behind a group ladies, of them. You're really fulfilling a stereotype about I'm telling you. Irish ladies here. And then all of a sudden, Finn's with me. He's like, Mom, they're all vaping. And I'm like, Stop judging. Just we're walking to the hotel. And then all of a sudden, this girl goes, Oh, God. And she, her friends grab her hair and she just barfs <laughs> in the middle of the street. And I was oh, like, boy. Okay, guys, this is Galway. Thank you very much. I found a tour that would take us to the Cliffs of Moore. When I tell you, that you are looking at cliffs that are 1,000 feet high. Oh, boy. You have to drive to a place like that. Okay? So we go, and it's five seconds from the front of our Airbnb, because our Airbnb is in the middle of the freaking ha most happening part of Galway, which is called the Latin Quarter. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then we go to our tour bus. It's a double-decker. We have the greatest bus driver. And already... My kids are not feeling great. Uh-oh. So, but that's just the first part of it, Jenny. So we go and and the bus driver's like, and I'll be bringing you around about half past four. And Colin goes, it's 8 a.m. I go, yeah, it's a long, it's a, it's a long tour. I wanted us to get a full experience of, of, uh, of Galway. So we go I on a double-decker bus. I didn't sandwiches or anything. I actually did. Because I had read and I knew, but just failed to mention. We get on the bus, and it was nice having a bus driver and a bus because I could relax about the driving. Right. So it's a good hour drive, and then they're like, 
okay, we're in Doolin. And so now we're going to be taking the Doolin ferry. And I'm like, oh, God. Sounds so like a boat. Let me, it's a boat. Uh-huh. And let me tell you, Jen, it is all the sudden people are calling it Irish winter. It is like the worst weather you've ever seen. We, I am trying to use my phone to take video just to have it. And I am blowing back and forth. And the kids are not having a good time. Oh and this is when they're like, now you have to get on a boat. <laughs> so we go get on this ferry. And if you've ever watched those TikTok videos where the sea is really raging and it's like. Oh, are you talking about the North Sea? I watched the those North relentlessly. Sea. Yeah, it's what I do instead of parent. Yeah, It's like yeah. what we were taking on the, our ferry was the North Sea. It just happened to be the other sea. <laughs> we're so, going to take a brief restroom break here at this oil rig. So uh, <laughs> put on one of these gigantic vests and climb this and ladder. And it's, <laughs> oh my God. So we're on this ferry. We go to the Aran Islands, which is super cool. It's literally these islands off the coast of Ireland, off the coast of Galway, that have been, that have families on there they speak um gaelic they've spoke it's the i they speak irish first before they speak english and these That's houses cool. look like all the normal houses but the limestone walls that they built was because they didn't want to have to run that stone down to the ocean because they needed to farm it so those assholes built freaking four foot high like fences that are made of limestone that have been around for a thousand years that are so intricate and the, this island makes your head spin because wow. it's like civilized yet so old. They didn't ancient, have, yeah. They did not have um, electricity until 1993. One no. of the girls was a teacher. She was driving our bus. She's like, I'm a teacher here. My sister is a teacher here. And I go, what did you do when you had, what? like, she goes, we ran on generators. And if the storm was bad enough, we knew it would go dark and then we would hear the jeep drive by and we knew that that was joe going to fix the generator and i was like good god this place but it was the best food we had was god, on that love island, them. right okay so we have the best seafood chowder and fish and chips and there was a part of me that as we were eating that i was like oh we gotta take a boat back oh god and chowder so i'm looking at that chowder and i'm looking at my kids they're both not doing great I'm looking at my husband, never seen him so pale, except when I delivered both babies. And then uh, we get back on, on the boat and they're like, good news. The cliffs of more, we can see him. The visibility is lifted, um, uh, but it's going to be a rough boat ride. And we get on this boat. <laughs> Jen. Excuse me. We, uh, my kids Excuse aren't me. good with a, a not rough <laughs> boat ride. Can we <laughs> just take it slow? Can we take it slow? Nope. Captain's like, let's. Let's take this sucker the up to the... The only way to look. get through it is to power Drive it down. through it. <laughs> the so Eleanor goes, we do, the better. Yeah, the faster, the better. So we go, Finn or Colin and Eleanor go to the front of the boat. Finn is with me. He's fine. We're doing okay. And I'm I'm looking at the cliffs of Moore and I'm just in awe. These thousand foot cliffs. Yep. And I'm like, my, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys. Help Finn, look at these amazing cliffs. And then I look over and when I tell you, he's gray. And he's holding on for dear life onto a, like an outdoor, like pole. And he's like, and then, and then I hear, and (laughs) Eleanor is just letting it rip in the front of the boat. And everybody is walking to the back, but everybody is barfing. At this point, there's 30 people on the boat that are barfing. And Eleanor gets off the boat and she's got so much vomit in her hair that it's, her hair looks like it has moose in it. Oh, God. And she's like, I barfed. I barfed so much, Mom. I barfed in my hair. And you're like, hold I'm... on. Let me get this clam out of your bangs. <laughs> Why did I, I go, feed these kids chowder? But the cliffs of more. She's like, I don't care. I go, fair. So then I'm like, I mean, okay, Kristen, guys. That is parenting in a nutshell where you're like, I am going to see this incredible thing that Earth built thousands of years ago that I'm going to get a chance to see once in this lifetime that I have flown to Cheyenne, Wyoming and Albuquerque, New Mexico 50 times to get these goddamn points so that I could come see this wonder, (laughs) the seventh wonder of the world. And you're going to projectile barf chowder in your Patagonia jacket that I overpaid for. And you're going to ruin this experience for me. I felt like, 
I looked at the Cliffs of Moher and I was like, I'm going to take you in for 0.03 seconds. And then I'm going to go back to tending to these children. But yeah. for right now, I'm just going to be in all of these cliffs. Where was dad, by the way? Uh, not doing great. Resented ah! me for, for oh. booking such a big tour. So then we go. So I'm like, um, okay, so do we go back home now? And the driver was like, no, we go to the top of the cliffs and you get to look out. And I'm like, oh God. So we get back on the bus. We go on the cliffs. We look at the cliffs. We go to the castle. We look out the castle. Then I go, Eleanor, do you want to go look? And she goes, no, I want to go to the gift shop. And I go, eh. okay. So then we go to the gift shop and then we are the first people back on the bus. And when <laughs> I tell you, all three of those people were passed out within four minutes, Aww. like two, like dead to their poor little Eleanor's head was like, she, it was like a 90 degree angle back on the bus. And I actually thought the whole adventure was really funny. And, and we got home and we ordered a pizza from that place. We'd had eight pizzas yeah. and we stayed in and watched a Netflix movie. Listen, I'm going to let you pat yourself on the back, mom, because even though that story had like a lot, you know, they barfed. Yeah. That's a th There's so much they're going to remember about that for the rest of their lives. And they're at the I age so. where like, that's what kids remember is like travel with their families around age 10 is like when those strong memories happen. And they're yeah. going to remember getting this once in a lifetime chance to see this, like this beautiful part of earth and experience this. So as hard as it was, Kristen, it, it's everything. I'm so it glad was, you got to see it. I'm so glad I was they too. got to see it. Like we, we had such a wonderful time. We, we left Galway and, and it really worked out nicely to leave Galway go back to Dublin, finish up what we wanted to see in Dublin, which was the Book of Kells, which I did not know was a book. The kids didn't care. We went to Trinity College, which was super cool, which looks very Harry Potter. But the bummer was they were in the middle of cleaning all of the books. So there weren't very many books on the shelves. And I think my kids were just kind of like, uh, can we just go to the park or can we go like walk around and listen to music? And I, I was like, okay, you guys have done a good job. So that in the roundabout was our awesome trip to Ireland. That's amazing. The Irish people were fantastic. The way they live is really kind. And here's one thing I'm going to, and I'll, we'll jump They're, off on this. They love kids too. They're so they love like children, friendly with kids, love and children. And also um, they taught me that you can use more words to be pleasant. Like you can, they, the, they use a lot of words to say things like this woman. And it was totally fair for her to say it. It said like the restrooms were only for customers and she needed, I could tell it was part of her job to sort of tell me that. Cause I came in right to use the bathroom and she didn't see that we were buying other stuff. And she's like, if it's not a bother, we, we can only reserve the bathrooms for paying customers. And I hope that's okay. And I, I hope it's not too much of a trouble. And I was like, I totally understand. We're buying stuff right here. Would it be okay? Would you like me to use it after we purchase? And she goes, no, no, go right ahead. But it was the fact that you can say things in a nice, nice way. way yeah. There was a girl that was like super annoyed that I didn't know my UK sizes to buy a pair of tennis shoes. And she was like, would it be a bother for you to go across the street to the other store? And I was like, not a bother at all. And it, <laughs> she told you to get the fuck out in the nicest did. way. In the nicest way possible. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you, and you were like, okay, I was going to get out. I'm you gonna... know, I've got a weird shoe size thing and they weren't tolerating me there. I was like, you oh. don't have any half sizes. And she's like, nope, I think you should go across the street. And then Ma I've told you that you're a seven and a half. <laughs> Uh, which is a 38 in European sizes. I'm, I don't care how long your toe is. We count that here in Ireland. So you better, <laughs> do you mind going across the street where they might be more friendly to your uh, weird uh, toe thing? Okay, thank you. Oh my God, Chris, yeah. did we just podcast though? We podcasted. We oh, podcasted. We Happy podcasted. Irish. I'll do a post and a reel and post all these places. Oh, and she's got all these and great thank pictures. You to all the people that rec recommended places because I honestly dipped into that like world of resource over and over and over again. So thank you and happy, happy Irish. Now she's got to take me. Okay, bye.